in this part we will cover basic data types of python language so first let us open lecture number 2 project that we have downloaded from the github repository first i will open then i will go to lecture number 2 i press okay maybe when you open the project you might not be able to see any interpreter existing interpreter here so you just need to go to interpreter settings then select show all then add you will be able to see the python interpreter that was downloaded in part 1 of the lecture 1 once you set up your interpreter Simply open lecture to basics.py. And to check if all the things are working properly, simply click the play button. And if the output is generated in the console tab, this means that the code is running correctly. I will set two breakpoints. And I will start debugging. The first basic data type is string. When we store a string in a variable, for example, I am storing hello in the variable a, it is stored as an array. So let's suppose I have stored hello in a and I print a, so hello is printed in the console tab. Similarly, if I want to write a paragraph, and stored in, store it into a variable a, I have to use triple quotations for that. This is similar to multi-line comments, but the difference is that I have placed a variable before this paragraph. So when I print it, you can see that the paragraph has printed in the console tab. Next, I'm storing hello word in a variable a, but I want to print e. Just, I want to print e. As I told that string is stored as an array, so h will be at location number 0, e will be at location number 1, l be at location number 2, and so on. So I print a parenthesis 1. This means that I want to just print one character of the string at location number 1. When I print it, you can see that e is printed. Similarly, if I want to print single character at a time using a for loop, for this I have to write a for loop for x in banana where x is the iterator which will iterate from location number 0 until the final location and print each character individually. So first b is printed a and so on. Now moving to line number 19, I'm again storing hello world into variable a and I want to check what is the total number of characters present in that variable. I just use the function len which is abbreviation of length. So 13 is printed. Next I have assigned the text the best things in life are free in a variable txt. And if I want to check if free is present in the text, I want to search, I want to search a word free into the existing sentence. So free in text, the answer is true because you can see that free is present at the last of the text. Similarly, I'm using this uh, condition in an if statement and I'm printing yes, free is present. Using the same sentence in the variable text txt, I want to check if expensive is not in the text. I know that expensive is not in the text, so true is output. True will be printed in the console tab. On line number 32, I'm assigning the same sentence to the text and I'm checking using an if statement if expensive is not present in the text. It is true, so no 
expensive is not present will be printed to the console tab on line number 36 i am assigning welcome to the jungle to txt but i want to split the sentence into words so for that i am using an inbuilt function which is compatible with string type variables in this function you have to give the splitting pattern i am giving the pattern of a space so wherever space is present it will split the sentence at that location so when i run it you can see that in the variable x i have now four elements stored inside a list welcome to the jungle the sentence is broken down into individual words so when i print it i get welcome to the jungle on line number 40 i have a sentence hello comma my name is peter comma i am 26 years old i want to split this sentence into three separate sentences so the pattern that i am giving is comma space and when i come to variable x to see what is inside this variable i can simply see that it is now a list containing hello my name is peter I am 26 years old. On line number 44, I have hello stored in A, word stored in B, and I am combining these two words into a single word using concatenation, a plus symbol. So now C contains hello word, a single word. Next data type. The next three data types we will cover are numeric data types, which is integer, float, and complex. Integer is any number that is stored without a decimal. Float is when we use a decimal between numbers or exponent between numbers. And the third data type is complex when we use J, the, the complex character. So x is equal to 1, y is this long number and z is minus 3, 2, 5, 5, 5, 2. All of these are valid integers. So when I print their type, the output is integer. From 63, 62 to 64, I have float type values stored in x, y, z. So when I print their type, I get float, float, float. From 68 to 70, I'm assigning numbers with exponent to variables. These will also be float type. So float is printed. For complex, I am using real and complex number stored inside variable x, y, and z. So when I print, the type will be complex. The next data type is Boolean. Boolean data type represent either true or false. So we can write true if the status of that Boolean value is true. False if the status if that boolean variable is false so it can be either true or false when i print a comma b i get true and false now moving onward i want to tell you how we can not just only get false or true by boolean values but also to get true or false if a number is zero or, or if a set is empty so when I print boolean false, it will be printed false. When I print boolean none, none is when nothing is present in a variable, it will also give false. Boolean of integer zero is also false. Boolean of an empty string is also false. Boolean of an empty tuple is also false. Boolean of an empty set is also false. Boolean of an empty dictionary is also false. Boolean of a string ABC is true. Boolean of a number 1, 2, 3 is true. Boolean of a list that is not empty is also true. This concludes our part 1 of this lecture number 2.